Hello everyone. In this series of videos, we are going to study about sentiment analysis. In fact, we are going to implement sentiment analysis via a small Python project. So as we know, sentiment analysis, as the name suggests, it means to identify the view or emotion behind a situation. It basically means to analyze and find the emotion or intent behind a piece of text or speech or any mode of communication. So in this video, we will focus on sentiment analysis of text data. We humans communicate with each other in variety of languages and any language is just a mediator or a way in which we try to express ourselves. And whatever we say has a sentiment associated with it. It might be positive or negative or it might be neutral as well. Suppose there is a fast food chain company and they sell a variety of different food items like burgers, pizza, sandwiches, milkshakes, etc. They have created a website to sell their food and now the customer can order any food from their websites and they can provide reviews as well, like whether they like the food or not. So if you see, I have even given you the examples of the user reviews. So user one says, I love this cheese sandwich, it's so delicious. Another user says the chicken burger has a variety bad taste, has a very bad taste. And a user three, I ordered this pizza today. So we can see that out of these three above reviews, the first reviews I didn't definitely a positive one, as it signifies that the customer was happy with the sandwich. The second review is negative, and hence the company needs to look into their budget department. And the third review doesn't signify whether the customer is happy or not. Hence, we can consider this as a neutral statement. So by looking at the above reviews, the company can now conclude that it needs to focus more on production and promotion of their sandwiches, as well as improve the quality of their burgers if they want to increase their own oversells. That is overall sales. But now, a problem arises that there will be hundreds and thousands of user reviews for their products and after a point of time, it will become nearly impossible to scan through each user review and come to a conclusion. Neither can they just come up with a conclusion by taking just 100 reviews or so because maybe the first 100 to 200 customers were having similar taste and liked sandwiches. But over time, when the number of reviews increases, there might be a situation where the positive reviews are overtaken by the more negative reviews. That is, the number of positive reviews are comparatively more than the number of negative reviews. Therefore, this is where the sentiment analysis models comes into play, which takes in a huge corpus of data having user reviews and finds a pattern and comes up with a conclusion based on real evidence rather than assumptions made on a small sample of data. And today we will explore this working of basic sentiment analysis model. We can even break these principal sentiments which is positive, negative into smaller sub sentiments such as happy, love, surprise, sad, fear, angry etc. as per the needs of the business requirement. So if you see the real world example, there was a time when social media services like Facebook used, just, used to just have two emotions associated with each post. That is, you can like a post or you can leave the post without any reaction and that basically signifies that you didn't like it. But over time, these reactions to posts have changed and grew into more granular sentiments which we see as of now as like like, love, sad, angry, etc. These are the small pictures which you can see in which every emotion from the Facebook has been listed here. So we, you can choose any of these on a basic particular Facebook post. And because of this upgrade, when any companies promotes their products on Facebook, they receive more specific reviews which will help them to enhance the customer experience. Now you can see how NLP can have businesses to grow and to get to know about more about their customers, what they are feeling regarding their particular product. And because of that, 
they now have more granular control on how to handle their customers. That is, they can target the customers who are just sad in a different way as compared to the customers who are angry and come with a business plan accordingly because nowadays just doing the bare minimum is not enough. Now, as we said that we will be creating a sentiment analysis model, but it's easier said than done. As we humans communicate with each other in a way that we call natural language, which is easy for us to interpret, it, but it's much more complicated and messy if we really look into it. Because there is a reason. There are billions of people and they have their own style of communicating. That is, a lot of tiny variations are added to the language and a lot of sentiments are attached to it, which is easy for us to interpret, it, but it becomes a challenging for, mother, for the machines to interpret it. This is why we need a process that makes the computer understand the natural language as we human do. And this is what we call natural language processing. And as we know, sentiment analysis is a subfield of NLP. And with the help of machine learning techniques, it tries to identify and extract the insights. So now it's time. Let's get, let's get our hands dirty by implementing sentiment analysis, which will predict the sentiment of a given statement. So first step, as we all know, let's import all the Python libraries that we will use throughout the program. So in this program, we will be make use of Pandas, which is a library for data analysis and data manipulation, perhaps one of the most important data science library. And then we have matplotlib and as we know this library is generally used for data visualization purposes gives beautiful pictures so for general figures and general graphs matplotlib, matplotlib is enough but if you want to produce uh, advanced visualizations you can use seaborn a seaborn is a library based on matplotlib and it is it provides a high level interface for data visualizations and another thing is word clouds which is a basically a library to visualize text data. Don't worry how a word cloud looks like. It will be very much engaging and appealing. I will even show you, uh, we will even see how it looks like. And finally, we import V, which provides function to pre-process the strings as well as uh, the given regular expressions. So first steps, now let's import. Now in order to import, we know we have to write import and does as pd import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt now we have to import seaborn so again import seaborn as sns and we have word cloud so from word cloud import word cloud and finally we will import v now when i run this piece of code when i run it and the command is good to go one thing to keep in mind is in our jupyter notebook word clause is not installed so first you need because it is not already available so you need to install it by using pip install word cloud then only this piece of code is going to run now next set of libraries are basically the natural language processing libraries and we will be using various libraries. We will be using NLTK, we will be using stop words and we will be using WordNet laminatizer. Now these libraries like NLTK which is as we all know that it is a natural language toolkit and it is a collection of libraries for natural language processing. Another library is stop words, which contains the redundant amount of words. So it is just a collection of words that doesn't provide any meaning to a sentence. Words like the and to are all inside the stop words. And another is the word net laminatizer, which is used to convert different forms of words into a single item, but still keep uh, keeping the context intact. Now let's import the libraries. First I'll import NLDK, import NLDK. Now from nltk.corpus, I'm going to import stop words and from again nltk.corpus. 
stem i'm going to import word landmark tizer spelling is correct Now it is now when I run this code and test run. Now the final set of libraries we will be uh, importing the scikit-learn libraries, which are basically the machine learning library for Python. And this machine learning Python library contains many libraries, and we will only be importing the libraries that we want to work on. So now let's see about it. So first library is basically count vectorizer, which is uh, which whose work is to just transform text into vectors. And we know that while dealing with uh, while dealing in NLP, we need to convert each word into vectors so that we can semantically we can compare different words. Another is grid search CV, which is hyper library for hyperparameter tunings. And last one is random uh, forest classifier, which is a machine learning algorithm for classification problems and if you don't know what classification problem is so classification problem is basically uh, for any object is converting and it is just cli uh, classifying that particular object into set of uh, groups which are uh, the groups which can be uh, which can be uh, classified so like for example if a person height is 173 uh, centimeters and we uh, make three groups one is tall short and medium and we assign different values for each of the groups and based on the for this person whose height is 173 we can uh, see that which particular groups he belongs to so basically classifying this particular object into various these groups is basically known as classification now let's just import the libraries so again we have to go i have to just write from scl learn dot Feature underscore extraction dot text. We need to import count vector by cell. Now we need to copy this three times. Sorry. Now again, next time let's get out model selection model underscore selection. We need to import grid search CV grid search CV and finally we have to import ensemble import random forest class C now we have all the libraries intact now just run this piece of code and it has run now there should be some set of criteria that we want to evaluate our model on which is perhaps known as evaluation metrics so evaluation metrics are basically the accuracy score precision scores recall score roc curve classification report and confusion metrics there are a lot of kind of uh, evaluation metrics we will be only using some set of uh, metrics and you can see the metrics that we will be using which are just accuracy score precision score accuracy score is the number of correct classified instances to the total number of instances Precision is basically the ratio of correctly predicted instances over the total positive instances. Recall score is basically the ratio of correctly uh, predicted instances over total instances in that class. ROC curve is a plot of true positive rate against false positive rate. Classification report is a report of precision, recall, and F1 score. And finally, confusion metrics, which is just a table to describe the classification models. Now, for that, again, we will be acting from run dot metrics import accuracy underscore score precision underscore score 
last one was confusion tricks and we even want to import ROC graph ROC graph anything else or okay, classification so classification After that, just need to scikit plot dot metrics and both plot underscore confusion metrics. That's it. I'll run this piece of code. On this piece of code, and we are good to go. Now, this was regarding the basic libraries that we will be uploading and their functionalities. Now, in the next video, we will be looking at the what particular data set we are going to work on. Thank you.